Hello everyone. Welcome to Lay the Loom Podcast. This is episode 16. My name is Cher and welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, if you're new here uh, on this channel, I talk mainly about knitting, but a little bit uh, occasionally spinning, uh, dyeing, and, uh, and weaving. Uh, so I'm really pleased that you've joined me and I thank you if you're a return viewer for coming back and such a warm welcome um, and uh, um, sharing of the last uh, several episodes, which has really helped grow our subscribership, um, and I'm really appreciative to you for that. So I just want to come in and um, kind of, this is a, I uh, wasn't planning to record, but thought I would uh, try to get something up uh, before this week since I've got some more travel. Um, and so just thought I'd update you on a few projects and talk to you a little bit about uh, my recent trip to Quebec and a couple acquisitions there. Um, yeah. So <laughs> without further ado, I will uh, move on to finished objects. So I think really the only finished object I have today is I have completed the um, circular sock machine shorty socks. And again, this pattern I used was by uh, Karen Ramel, uh, who is CSM Love, and it's for um, mock rib hung hem uh, shorty socks, and that pattern is available on um, Ravelry and her website uh, as well, I believe. Or definitely on her website, I believe it's also on uh, as a Ravelry project pages too. Um, and if you have a circular sock machine or you're interested in, her channel is really great to um, kind of experience um, what a sock circular sock machine uh, knitting is like um, and um, certainly a wealth of information from a tutorial perspective if you're a CSM um, owner. That is it for, <laughs> for finished objects. I spent quite a lot of time uh, knitting on my uh, cyclone cardigan that I've shown in the last several episodes. I'm actually still working through the back of that, uh, so I'm not going to talk about that one this time. Um, and I've been traveling, so I have a, a couple things I've kind of chosen not to, the bigger sweaters are harder to travel with. But um, on our recent trip to, um, or before my recent trip, actually a week, two weeks ago, yeah, I, um, decided to cast on another uh, victory cardigan. So this is my current, I just bound off the body today. And uh, I am using a uh, wool of the Andes in the colorway Claret Heather. And that is 110 yards per 50 grams. And the light's not quite as good as my usual setup. So I hope you all will bear with me. Super affordable, lovely to knit with. It's very soft, it's got good um, drape, I think as you can see. Um, so I did, um, probably it's three episodes back, I did uh, an, another um, uh, Victory card again using the Ramagarn that's the recommended yarn for that. So this is, um, I used my notes from that where I'd done a little bit of modification uh, and sort of tracked where I did my increasing and decreasing because there is waist shaping uh, and bust shaping. Um, and I tried to get it closer to one of the main um, actual pattern uh, counts. Uh, so I started with a size um, G, went up to a size H, and then I did a little bit uh, longer uh, and a couple more increases at the, at the bottom of the body. Um, I'll say all in all, um, I knit this, the body, and it's on US 9, which I meant to look up the millimeter, sorry, I'll pop it here. Um, uh, so it knits up quite quickly, and um, it's a little bit uh, more airy fabric, I guess, with this uh, needle. And I think my gauge is a little bit looser with this yarn, um, but I'm really happy with it. And really, I've knit it I started to cast it on on a Sunday afternoon, kind of knit a couple hours or an hour or so in the evenings that week. Um, and then I've had one partial weekend and then uh, a little bit of uh, yesterday, I kind of finished off the body. So it was really quick. I'm hoping the sleeves go quickly and I can get it cast off before 
uh, the Stephen West mystery, Knit Along. We'll talk about that in, the, in a minute. So the other project I've really been mainly working on um, is uh, my habitation throw. And the reason I got this back out, and this pattern is by Helen Stewart. I know many, many folks have knit it. Um, this is in my um, I Heart You favorite project bag. Um, the, uh, many folks have done this. It's just a really nice, um, easy pattern, but what I started doing is because I have, have um, put all my minis together into a magic ball, magic cake, and um, so it makes it pretty easy to travel because it's it's really just you know it's a pretty easy pattern to memorize. Um, so I am almost to the decrease section. I'm not sure I can even <laughs> get this all in frame, uh, but. Um, it's a very relaxing knit. I kind of tend to pull it out when I, you know, if I have company or something that I, you know, want to chat and not really pay a whole lot of attention. There's enough interest with the eyelet rows to give you, um, you know, uh, some chat, you know, some thinking about it. I, you know, every several rows, the color changes are quite motivating. Um, I ended up I'm going to incorporate a few more minis than I had planned originally. Uh, and um, make it just a tiny bit bigger but um, it's just been really a good travel project and I'll say um, it caught a lot of attention I was knitting at breakfast uh, we were uh, we stayed uh, in Quebec City at the Chateau La Frontenac um, I had a, a, a really nice uh, trip we had one um, and um, that it was just phenomenal but we had some nice relaxing breakfasts, and that's kind of where I where I took my knitting and it kind of caught the attention of, of a number of people. So it was kind of fun to, to talk about, um, you know, with folks and knitting community. And uh, so uh, that was uh, a, an interesting uh, little side bonus. So um, I do highly recommend that pattern for just a nice, relaxing, um, easy uh, knit. It starts at one corner, so not a lot of cast on, and then you grow it and, and bring it back in. She has a very interesting, um, should have showed, she has a very interesting way to do the I-cord edging as you go. Let's see if we can get a little close up of that. Um, that is, makes it a very, for a very, very nice finish. So again, that pattern is by Helen Stewart. Um, I know a lot of people have made that, but I definitely recommend it. And I would definitely do another one. I actually think I might do one. I've seen people do them where they cast it on, grow it a little bit, and then go straight for a while, and then go back off so more like a shawl. A single color would be really nice, I think, uh, as well. So um, kind of other, a few other things sort of in, in progress, but those are the two that I sort of wanted to share an update with you today on. I think that leads us to... Dash acquisitions and inspiration. So, a um, couple things. I got a couple new knitting pins. So, some if you're a regular viewer, you might know, but if you if not, so I um, am a continental knitter, and um, I purl a little continental, um, but uh, mainly Norwegian. If it's but if it's a long row of purl. Uh, rounds of it I will do Portuguese pearl so you use a knitting pen to hold the yarn in front and you're flicking really with your thumb which is I think I find really fast and keeps my tension uh, quite nice so I had misplaced my knitting pen and there's other ways I've used a stitch marker or I'll put it on my necklace or whatever but I got I thought this is I, I did eventually thankfully find it but um, I d thought this is silly I need to, <laughs> need to have another one because obviously it's usually in one project bag and I need it in another project bag or something. So I, I ordered uh, a couple off uh, Etsy. So this first one is um, like my current one. It has a magnetic uh, backing and it is from Luna Fairy Cat. Um, it's just really pretty so the yarn catches through here if you're not familiar with that. Um, and uh, it came really quickly. It's packaged really nicely. Um, this is a little stitch marker progress keeper set. 
also, I can't see, it has this cute little cat on it. There you go. Um, so that is, is one set. Um, and then I, I thought, always thought it would be neat to have one that hung on my, um, on my necklace. And this is not exactly what I thought I was ordering, which I'm sure is totally me. Um, it's, uh, it's much larger than my other two and kind of was really reads more like a stitch marker holder, but, um, but it does have this loop up here. So I'm going to try that. And this is by clasp and closures. Um, Leslie Ellen Wind there. So that's a couple of um, makers to just add to your uh, knowledge base. And so both available on, on Etsy. So the hotel we stayed at was in Quebec City. We um, flew from our home in North Carolina to Quebec City, uh, Quebec, Canada. Um, and spent um, three days, really two full days, um, at kind of exploring the city, which is just beautiful. Um, really has that European vibe that we kind of missed from living overseas. And um, people were just welcoming and friendly. Um, <laughs> we tried so hard to dust off our extremely rusty and bad French. So my um, apologies to anyone out there who speaks fluent French. Um, that we encountered, um, but they were just so sweet. I took like one or two words out of our mouth and they switched to English uh, immediately, but um, it, nonetheless, we, we tried to make an effort. So, um, but um, one of the shops that we went to uh, in the old town was, I'm probably gonna mess this up, Charlevoix, I'm gonna say. And I think there's a couple of outlets, but um, Basically, this is, uh, as I understand it, a local farm to a farm local to Quebec. The sheep are a breed local to Quebec, um, and uh, produce the yarn. So, um, some of you, if you follow me on Instagram, may know our reason for the trip to Canada was not only the trip that I had um, been awarded from work, but um, we were also planning to attend the Prince Edward Isle Fiber Festival that was supposed to happen in 2020 and that was supposed to happen in 2021. This year we were like, yay. Uh, so that was our side trip. Um, as you know, from watching <laughs> the recent weather and, and no doubt in, in Instagram, um, that um, festival was canceled prior to um, Fiona um, uh, descending on the island. And, and of course, you know, it would not be remiss to say that, you know, certainly my thoughts are with uh, the entire all the communities in that area that were hit by the storm and of course we've got Ian quickly on his tail or on her tail and uh, coming up from the south too so really kind of keeping an eye on that but um, anyway probably the right decision of course to not have us all stuck on the island and that was a whole other experience trying to get home but um, <clears throat> nonetheless <laughs> this is the only yarn that I managed to bring back from my uh, what should have been a very fruitful uh, fiber uh, acquisition trip but um, so they had this in the shop and uh, so I picked up a couple, and this is um, a wool. I think the sheep is Mouton, M-O-U-T-O-N, uh, of Quebec. Hopefully I'm getting that, trans as, as I understood it correct. And um, so I'll have a little bit to, to, um, to show. And then number of, it really was mainly a shop of pre-knitted um, items. And so I got this really cool, it's a hood. And you, let's see if I can, see if I can demo it. So it's a hood and a turtleneck. So if you can imagine being able to wear that with, you know, your shawl or a coat or whatever, like how amazingly cozy, right? Um, so I had to get that because I had never really seen anything uh, quite like it. And um, also really always like to support um, local artists and, and fiber um, producers whenever, whenever I can and, and makes it a really nice kind of, um, um, no doubt my hair's 
great now. <laughs> it makes it a really nice souvenir from the trip. So I uh, have both of those items. So that is kind of the extent of what I brought back from my trip. But, um, uh, and I guess as a, just sort of a public service announcement, there was a lot of vendors that worked really hard. Uh, and, and of course the committee that, to get that fiber festival together. Uh, so, um, you know, you'll see that online. It'd be great to support those, um, those vendors um, that would have been there um, uh, as well. Um, the next uh, thing I've got up is um, the September Row One Yarn um, mini subscription. So I'm going to pop in uh, a clip here where I tried a different setup to kind of show you that. So here you are. Hey y'all, just wanted to pop in for a minute and, and uh, give you a little preview or post view you've probably seen now. The Row One uh, mini uh, skein um, subscription that I received for September. And in the spirit of September being National Sewing Month, um, the Carnival of Color Club from Row One, um, uh, there is 100 grams of happy fingering from Sew, S-E-W, Happy Jane. Um, hand dyed happy is the uh, is the slogan. This is 75 uh, 25 superwash merino nylon and 462 yards to 100 um, grams. So Heather Best is the dyer behind So Happy Jane. And the colors we have uh, starting down here are Moody, Sunken Ship, Wander, Cabin in the Woods, Foxy, Tender, Rosy Glow. Shell Seeker, Rainy Day, and Greystone. And um, while I always like a good stitch marker, I was just absolutely delighted with this month's uh, stitch marker. It's a Little Singer uh, sewing machine. So I um, am really fortunate. Um, I'm not a huge sewer, but I uh, did quite a bit of quilting um, in my past and hopefully to, to do more someday. Um, and my grandmother was a really avid quilter and she, um, bought my sister and my mother, my, along with herself, of course, um, the Singer Featherweight, uh, sewing machine. So that's the, looks very much, uh, like that, uh, stitch marker. So that brings kind of warm, uh, comforting feelings, uh, for me, uh, for, for past connections. So, it's a lovely uh, collection and um, give you a little closer in preview here of each of those skeins and uh, sorry about that the uh, noise in the background that I'm not sure how that's going to come across is our little fountain that we installed in the garden this summer so hopefully that's kind of a peaceful background noise so so there we are with the September Row One Mini Club. So that's been really a fun um, uh, subscription to do. I just plan to do it for a few months to sort of get some more minis to um, work on really this, the triangle and blanket, which um, again, I think I said I was gonna show this one. I'll hold that for the next uh, episode, but because I'm not very far, but that's gonna be my scrappy blanket addition to the rotation. Uh, some more to come on that and it's just a nice way to kind of like get some different things new learn about some different dyers as well and my last acquisition is the um, yarn that I have purchased for the Stephen West uh, make along um, super excited about that this year um, I really wasn't planning to join in. Um, I did shawlography last year. I learned a ton and I kind of thought, no, I'm not going to, I'm not going to spend the time. I've got to really want to work on my sweaters. Um, but honestly, when he came out and of course we don't know what the pattern will be like, but he, the, just the enthusiasm around it, the community around it and the amount of learning, I mean, my knitting just grew by leaps and bounds. It's a master class in knitting. So if you haven't participated, even if shawls aren't your thing, I mean, I love them. I don't wear the fan, I wear my plain garter stitch one kind of all the time. Um, but um, 
it's just a really great learning opportunity. And that's how I kind of choose to take it for literally the price of a pattern. You just get this master class. For this year's um, uh, knit, uh, knit Along, you need a, 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 a dark and a light contrast uh, pair, two skeins each, and then a skein of, he calls a pop color, or your, or your kind of like, you know, feature color. I actually tried to buy a kit. I was not quick enough <laughs> because that day job, you know. Um, but I ended up going on uh, Ruby and Rose's website and uh, for my dark, I really, really loved her log cabin getaway. Some of you have seen this on my Instagram. There are some photos there too and I'll try to pop some in. And for the light, I picked party dress. And these are the um, the log cabin getaway is plump rose base. So this is a 8515 superwash merino. The party dress is actually a single um, ply, which I've not um, I've not really used before. So I I think it's fine for a shawl. It'll be really interesting and different to kind of work with. And um, so those were. You know, so the, the two, and then I needed the pop. And of course, it's hard to pick online, and I, I really wasn't sure when I got these if I loved them or not, but as I've left them laying out and unskeined them and looked at it with my pop, I think I'm actually really happy with the selection. I know that the log cabin getaway is definitely not coming through in the camera. Um, as much there is quite a depth of, of different colors in there and so this blue is called twilight and it's also in a single ply so if i can do all of them together i have a couple of backups so if i get knitting and i don't really love it um i've got some other pops i can put in there but i think i'm going to try to stay the course uh with it and um, so definitely looking forward to that. I believe that starts on October 6th. You can purchase the uh, instructions now to how you pick your yarn and do your swatching and so forth. And he does so. And he's got a very several good um, intro videos on different ways to pick your yarn collection. That's kind of how I put that together. I, the one that I was planning to get, which I think was called Rune by the Urban Pearl. I think it was that collection. Uh, was not available so I kind of tried to uh, mimic that uh, as closely as I could when I picked out the, the, the yarns I ended up with. And this is a sock spin. I started with um, Jacob and Alpaca. Um, so I had blended, I think I did 70-30. I started this uh, after um, my wool and mitten had done a sock, spin for socks, uh, I believe, um, earlier this spring. And uh, I um, got one batch done and have not uh, <laughs> finished the other batch. It's sort of sat here. I don't know. I come in fits and starts. And of course, I got the Hansen um, E spinner, and I've been doing a little more spinning on that because it's in the living room and kind of in front of me more. Not that this one that I pass every day getting up and going to bed <laughs> is also not fairly visible, but uh, um, I'm finding this generally is uh, drafting out nicely with a long draw and Try not to overspin it, but do want a little more twist than I might for some. Just thinking that, that might help with the durability of the sock, which is partially why. I mean, the 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 Jacob is a longer staple uh, anyway, but the, my Jacob or this particular Jacob fleece, this is still um, Sibby's fleece, and I blended some of the black and white to get this gray and I had some I had some kind of mid-tones you know mixed in there of course because it's it's a very variegated uh, fleece but um, to but and then the, the alpaca 
is, um, no, you know what? I take that back. It was white Jacob and the black was the alpaca. So that's totally where that's coming in. And you might see that, um, coming across there in the fiber, kind of where we are with that spin. So, um, and that is it really for today. So, um, I appreciate so much, uh, you joining me and I think uh, next time we'll be talking more about the Stephen West mystery no long. I'll have hopefully finished victory card again, and maybe we'll talk more about the progress on the cyclone, uh, cardigan as well. I look forward to hearing all about what you're making, uh, and doing. So, um, thanks so much. Happy knitting, spinning, dining, and weaving. Goodbye.